OK, so now let's talk about the period of a function. So, so far we've talked about two functions. We have f of x equals cosine of x and f of x equals sine of x. And when dealing with these two functions, what we looked at was that the period was always 2 pi. And what that means is the distance that it took on our graph for our graph to complete one cycle, it always ended, when it went to 2 pi, it ended back right where it started. So we call that one period. So the period for cosine and sine of x were both 2 pi. And then the next thing what we notice is we can alterate our pi by multiplying it by a number inside of our function. So if I was going to take a look at the function, and I'm going to make a look at two differences. Let's say I look at f of x equals cosine of, let's say, 2x. And then here, let's graph f of x equals sine of 1 half x. All right? So the definition of period is, well, we all talked about definition of period, but the formula to determine the period of a graph is going to be equal 2 pi divided by b. Now, when we talked about function a, a was the number that was in front of your function that we multiplied by, right? That was for your amplitude. b is going to be the number that you're going to multiply inside your function. And we'll get into, if you look at, watch the video on the formal definition of a, of a function for sine and cosine, um, you can see where a and b are. But remember, a is your amplitude, the number you multiply outside your function. And b is going to be the value that you're going to be multiplying inside your function. So if you look at this, in this form, if for cosine, right now I have my period is now going to be, for this one, my b value is 2. So if I want to find the period, all I'm going to do is take 2 pi and divide it by 2. Therefore, my new period is now going to be pi. Over here, if I wanted to find the period, I'm going to take my b is not just um, one, it's not just x, but now it's going to be 2 pi divided by 1 half, which is equal to 4 pi. So let's take a look and see exactly what this is going to do to our two graphs. So I'm going to try to graph the cosine function here, and I'm going to graph the sine function here. And I'm going to try to make these a little bit different here. So we know that, um, first of all, we're always going to start off at 0. And I'm just going to graph the first quadrant of each one of these graphs. So you can at least see the idea of what the period does. Even though, remember, you can continue that graph and also work in that negative direction. So when looking at cosine uh, of x, what I'm doing now is, remember, when we talked about a period, actually, let's do these separately. Let's do the cosine function first. So when I want to graph the cosine function, what it's going to look like, remember, is we have our four important, our five important points. We have 0, then we had pi over 2, then we had pi, 3 pi over 2, and then we had 2 pi. So remember, we always started up at negative at positive 1, crossed at pi over 2, went down to negative 1 crossed at 0, 0, and then up, went up to positive 1 again. This is our cosine graph. This is the completion of one period. Now, what you notice is there are, um, es well, essentially, we have our, really our four important points. So what I want to do to find my new critical points, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my new period and divide it by 4. So what that means is now, at every interval of pi over 4, that's going to be my new critical point. Because if you notice, my original pi period was 2 pi. And you notice there was kind of my four critical points, right? Well, if I take my new period and divide it by pi over 4, I'm now going to get my new critical points. So my first criti new critical point would be pi over 4 plus another pi over 4 is going to be pi halves plus another pi over 4 is going to be 3 pi over 4, and then add another one is going to be pi over 4. So now my graph is going to cross, is going to have these critical points. Meaning my graph is going to cross at pi over 4, go down to negative 1 at pi over 2, cross back up at 3 pi over 4, and come back up at pi. So what you can see is this period, this graph has been it's kind of been like smooshed back in, right? Rather than it taking it all the way down to 2 pi for it to complete a period, we were able to complete the whole period 
down in pi. So let's look real quickly. How can it affect it if we have a new period of 4 pi with the sine graph? So graphing the sine graph, remember the sine graph still goes up to 1 and negative 1, but it starts at 0. So at pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. So remember, it starts up, goes up to 1, crosses down to negative 1, and at 2 pi, I don't know what I was doing. <laughs> this is way too long. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So at pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and at 2 pi. So it goes up to 1 and goes down to negative 1. So it goes up to 1, crosses at pi, goes down to negative 1, and then crosses at 2 pi. However, now what you notice is my period is now 4 pi. So what I can do to find my new critical points, because remember our critical points are our maximum, our x-intercept, our minimum, and our x-intercept. So what I can do is that I take 4 pi, divide it by 4, I get pi. That means my new critical points are at pi. So rather than it's going to be pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and at 4 pi. So now what I'm going to do is when I'm graphing my graph, the first critical point, the max value, is going to be at pi rather than at pi over 2. So it's going to go up to pi. Then it crosses the next critical point as at 2 pi. Then it goes down to negative 1 at 3 pi and then completes its period at 4 pi, where you can see the circle has completed its period or its um, cycle within 4 pi, which was the period. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That's how you determine the period and how you set a graph. Thanks.